Yo, what's going on my ninjas? My name is Sensei Carls and welcome back to another ninja vlog. You guys, today you saw it on the thumbnail. I'm gonna be teaching you the real way how to make a monkey fist lanyard, a self-defense lanyard. Just in case you guys are new to the channel and you guys need a little bit of context to who I am and what I do and why I'm qualified to teach you something like this. Um, first and foremost, I am a martial artist by trade. That is what I do for a living. And uh, one day I saw people, you know, making monkey fists on YouTube and I was like, I could do that. I'm very crafty. I'm a big artist. I also do pottery. I've been doing art my whole life. There's a ninjutsu weapon that is called a kusari fondo. What it is, is it's basically just a chain with two pieces of metal attached to the ends. And the ninjas used to swing that around. And because it had that piece of metal on the end, a piece of steel, the samurai masks were just clay. They were just ceramic. And so when they would smash that metal into those ceramic masks, they would shatter that ceramic. That ceramic would pierce into the samurai's eyes, and lo and behold, you have yourself a weapon. And that's kind of what I wanted to mimic with the Monkey Fist Lantern. So I make mine just a little bit longer than most people are used to because I've designed mine to be one, a functioning lanyard, and two, a functioning self-defense tool because of my, you know, occupation. My grass is hella green. I've been making work on this grass, you guys. But anyways, that's not why you're here. Get in today's video. What do you say I show you guys how to make a self-defense lantern? And yes, this is a full tutorial. This is gonna be a long video, so please bear with me. I'm gonna make it as exciting as I possibly can with some awesome B-roll and some good talking tutorial stuff. I'm gonna try to talk you through each thing and hopefully it's not too confusing, but at any time you guys feel free to pause the video and at the end of this video, please drop a thumbs up on the video if you caught value and you learned something, but only if you caught value and you learned something. If you didn't, do me a favor, drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys wanna see next because after all, I am here to serve you guys and entertain you guys. So. Don't forget to subscribe too for more videos like this and let's get started. All right, my ninjas. So grab that paracord in your list. We're gonna need that 550 paracord military spec, not craft paracord. Those two colors and whatever color is gonna be your bearing is gonna need to be about 10 to 12 feet. You're gonna need a jig. You're gonna need a bearing. I'm using an inch and a quarter and you're gonna need your fid. I use scissors and a lighter. All right, my ninjas, it's time to get started. Go ahead, grab all your stuff, put it off to the side. Grab that one that's gonna be wrapping around the bearing, that color. Grab the end, pull out about shoulder width apart. It's gonna be average about a foot. Then you're gonna do that a second time for a total of about 24 inches, two feet, Pause the video right here. Notice that I'm starting on the bottom side of the jig. When I started, I put it on that bottom peg. I wrapped it all the way around to that first one. As I do the second one right now, you're gonna wanna make sure that your starting point is that bottom peg. And that is what you're going off of. And make sure that you're counting every single rotation that you're doing. So as you're going around, we're just gonna go ahead and fast forward on some of these easier parts because they're pretty self-explanatory. You're just wrapping all the way until you get to a certain number. Now, this is something to note. When you get to this last part, you need to make sure that whatever that peg is, you're wrapping around and you're going through the center for the second wrap. That is gonna now come down in between all the pegs, as you see me pulling through right here. And once you go through, you're gonna make sure that you pull that extra excess paracord all the way through the bottom like I'm doing right now, you guys. And then from that point, right where I'm pointing, you're gonna pull back up and you're gonna match it side by side with the one that you just put through the center. And once you have that, you're gonna start kind of encompassing that first layer that we wrapped. Notice that I just pointed to those two layers. When you're doing those two layers, you wanna make sure that they stay as flush as possible to that side, and you're gonna repeat that process. You're gonna go down, you're gonna come through the center of the pegs, and you're gonna go right back up. Now, something to note, that I didn't say earlier is because I'm using specific military spec paracord 13 16ths 
I need to make sure that because I'm also using an inch and a quarter bearing, I am doing seven wraps, seven rotations. So as I'm going through, I'm gonna make sure and push each of these layers to the side so I have plenty of space so that when I get to the end right here, I have the space to actually do this. So you gotta count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And once you would be starting the eighth one, you're gonna take that little bit and you're gonna hook it up and over that left peg. And it's always gonna be that bottom peg, you guys. So when we're here, we're gonna take that and we're gonna wrap it straight around that edge like I'm doing. But the thing that we gotta pay attention to now is right into that crevice. And then we're gonna come out the other crevice. So we're gonna push this paracord down. And once you push it down, it's gonna go through the center of the pegs. From the center of the pegs, it's gonna come back up through this crevice, moving upwards and we're gonna repeat that process. So let's go ahead and get started. So we take this end and we're gonna push it through that little crevice. Grab the tip, pull the whole thing through. And once you got the whole thing pulled through, make sure it's nice and snug. You're gonna take that cord, you're gonna push it back through the center of the pegs, all the way through to the other side. Now, if this is a little bit awkward, it's just because I'm trying to do it for the video. There's obviously a little bit easier way to do that. But right here on this crevice, you're gonna take that paracord that you just pulled through the center of the pegs, you're gonna take it back up and through the inside of that crevice. Because this is now gonna be the one that's gonna layer on the inside to kind of cohesively hold everything together. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because on this one, it's gonna get really tight because you're starting to layer this paracord. Now, once you lay this first one down, I always like to make sure that I'm holding on to that position on where I want it to sit. So, while I'm holding it, I'm gonna take that end of that paracord again, and I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through that crevice. And we're just gonna repeat this process over and over and over and over again, just like we did on those other ones. Once you understand where the paracord is going, you literally just keep wrapping until you get to your seven layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one through. And I'm gonna repeat this process until I get to seven layers on my monkey fist. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this one through. And as you do this, try to make sure that the paracord stays flat and even. And now that I've got that first layer, I'm gonna hold that one in place with my thumb. I'm gonna take the bottom of that paracord. I'm gonna push it up from the bottom. And when I take it up from the bottom, it's gonna go back up through that top, through that crevice. And it's gonna meet back on top where I've put my first layer. Just pulling this guy through, make sure it's nice and snug. Everything that we do with all of this needs to be hand tight, like just barely hand tight. Enough to stay snug, not enough to start tightening and moving the paracord and making it shift because it's very easy to distort your bearing inside the paracord while you're wrapping. And like I said, we're gonna repeat that process. Down through the first one, pull that paracord, all the way through and then feed it through the center of those pegs come back up the other side up through that second crevice and then repeat the process seven times remember to count because if you stop counting a lot of times it's pretty easy to get lost there's times where i've completely finished a bearing started tightening it and wondered why it was starting to get off and it's usually because I did not count. I had seven on one side and six on another and it just doesn't work that way. So watch what I do here now. As I start taking it through, I'm gonna get to a point where it's gonna start getting a lot tighter to actually be able to get that paracord through nice and easy. So I'm actually going to take this at the three and four revolution. And I'm actually gonna take the bearing completely off of the jig now. Now, a lot of people don't recommend this, but you know, like I said, after years of doing this and selling these professionally and, and perfecting the craft, if you will, I've noticed that this just makes the perfection process that much easier. So I recommend that you do this. Make sure though that when you are holding it, you're keeping track of how the shape is and you're not trying to distort it at all because this can get finicky. I have dropped this and lost everything. So if this works for you, great. 
not if not you know no worries but for me personally i have definitely found that this helps me perfect the art of it and you're just going to keep repeating it like if it was on the jig and you're going to keep doing that and you're going to push it through that crevice now this is going to be a lot easier to be able to maneuver that paracord and tighten everything up so like i said i went through that crevice I pulled it around, wrapped it around the bearing, and came back out through the other one. And I'm just going to keep layering. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is, after I build a couple more layers to kind of create that um, rigidity in the shape, I'm going to kind of coax those paracord layers to the side to create a little bit extra room. Notice that it's getting really tight on that right hand side. And so what I want to do is make sure that that stays flush, flush, flush all the way down. Notice how you can see everything is side by side and layered. What I'm going to show you right here is a common mistake. Is if you get that cord to layer crisscrossed on top, man, that's going to throw you off. And this is what I was talking about, grabbing that paracord, pushing it a little bit to the side. And now if you can see, I have a little bit more space on that right hand side. So let's just keep repeating that process. We're going to grab the tip of that paracord. I'm going to keep pushing it through. Pull that out. And let's finish the process, you guys. I'll see you back once you've got seven layers. All right, you guys, so right now I'm just making sure that I have seven. Once you have seven, stop, because this last part is where we start to tighten. The overall shape is done. I'm just going through double checking to make sure that I have seven on every single side, because if you do not, you need to start over at this point, and it's the easiest to start over at this point than to have to tighten everything and go all over again. Now. I'm gonna have this bottom paracord. There's two sides that you should have. One paracord string should be coming straight down and the other one should be going straight across. We're gonna understand where the bearing is being wrapped and how we wrapped it just now. So there's all those different dimensions, forward, backward, side, and around, and we need to understand right where this bottom layer is. We need to take this top layer that's going up and down that's going to tighten right here where I'm grabbing. So you see all that loose paracord? That bottom layer right there is the one that's gonna be wrapping horizontally. So we're gonna take this one, which is gonna be the vertical tightening session. So this one that I'm grabbing right here, that's that one that's gonna be holding into that position. So I'm gonna take the opposite end of that that would be coming out, that paracord coming down, I'm gonna grab that edge, and that's number one. So I'm gonna grab number two on that bottom side because this one right here that I'm pointing to, that is number one on the top side. So I need to grab number two layer on the bottom, grab this right here. You see what I'm pointing to? That is that second layer. I'm gonna grab that layer and I'm gonna pull on it. This is very important to note, you guys. You need to understand which one's gonna be the counter technique. When you pull on this string, it's gonna make this side do this. You know, the cause and effect kind of thing. You need to understand that when you pull this side, it's gonna make this side tighten. If you loosen this side, it's gonna make that side loosen. So, same thing. I grab two on the top side, and now what I'm doing is as I pull, I make sure I, I pull hand tight, I layer it right next to that other one, and if you notice, I have two side by side, just perfect and everything else is pretty loose. I'm gonna hold that in place because I like to make sure that where I put it is where it stays. And then I let go. And then all I did was grab that third one on the bottom. I grab it, I put it right side by side, I layer, and then from there I hold it in place again. I grab the third layer on that bottom, or the top side, the bottom side, whichever one you're on, whichever rotation, doesn't matter, just keep track of your numbers. I hold that one in place and we repeat this process. We're gonna go all the way down. Now, this is the first step of tightening. So when you finish the paracord tightening session, you always need to finish with the one that's going down. That should be the last and final one. So it should be first and it should be last. So right now, we are getting this one completely tightened and it's gonna start looking more like the monkey fist shape. So right at the end of this, you're gonna see how much more tight this has already become just pulling it off of that jig.
and here we go. This is that last pull. I'm just gonna end up grabbing that paracord string that was on the bottom and I just keep twisting it because I want to make sure that it is layered flat. I do not want any spirals or twists. It does add difficulty to the tightening sessions and the overall look and quality. Now that I have my basic shape, it is not tightened yet, but I'm gonna understand where I just came from. This is that layer that I just, just tightened. From here, we're gonna follow this backwards. Notice that I counted backwards from where I am. That one that I'm pointing at right now, we're gonna follow that down. It is gonna go down, and it's gonna go underneath this paracord right here. It's gonna layer on the bottom, and that is the one that we just finished tightening. It's gonna come underneath that layer now, and it comes out to the side. So we need to understand that this one that I'm pointing at right here, we're gonna grab that one, tighten it, and layer up. So we grab that first one, we grab and we pull, only hand tightening. So when you grab and you pull, know that you need to only pull so hard. You do not need to do tight, tight, tight sessions right off the bat. If you do, I promise you, you will distort the overall look. Now, when we get this, I always like to kind of grab whatever layer I'm tightening first off, which is gonna be this layer here, and I always like to push it together because that's gonna tighten this middle section here. So, as I grab that first one and I pull, I make sure that it's kind of snug. It's already creating that very perfect shape that I'm looking for. I'm gonna grab one on the other side. We're gonna start tightening this all together, okay? So, go ahead and grab that next layer on the other side. You're gonna grab and you're gonna pull that one tight. Notice how it synced in that other side. It cinched it in. That's that first layer. So I'm on one on the other side. So I like to count like this, you guys. I like to count one, one, two, two, three, three. So now I'm on twos. I just did one and one. Now I'm on two and two. So I just grabbed that second layer. I'm gonna grab that second layer. I'm gonna push it into place. I'm gonna hold that with my thumb or my fingers, whatever, I guess. And then I'm gonna find two on the other side, okay? So, once I flip it over, I need to understand, okay, I just did one, that's one, I'm looking for two. That's two. Grab two, pull two, it's gonna pull two on the other side, right? Then, I know, no, I just did the first two, I just pulled the second two. So, what are we on? Well, we are on three. No duh. Makes sense, you guys. So, once you guys understand the pattern, it is so easy to understand. If you're new at paracord, if you're new to a lot of this kind of crafty stuff, this can get very difficult, this can get very confusing. I know for myself, someone who is very artistic, learning how to perfect the monkey fist was so hard. But keep counting, keep staying focused, because we just finished two, now we're on three, and I'm just grabbing these again, you guys, like I said, and hand tightening. They should not be like yanked on. You're just trying to grab that third layer, pull it through, work your way all the way to the top, and join me back when you have that. Now is always a good time to pause those videos just to make sure. So, now that we're at the top, you guys, of this we're gonna make sure that we understand again where the paracord is going. So we just tightened this round session and now we're gonna start going through the last third rotation. It comes out and around the bottom and comes through this layer here. So this one that I'm touching, that's the one that we're gonna pull that is gonna create this one that's loose to tighten. Watch this. Oh, that's so satisfying. So once we grab that and I pull it, I have to understand what is it tightening? It is tightening this top layer, so I'm gonna make sure I don't over tighten because I don't wanna turn my layers. I want everything to be straight and symmetrical, okay? Now, from this position, because it's my last layer, I like to make sure and grab all of those edges, push them together, and start to kind of push everything into the center to create that perfect shape. I mean, just already, it looks like a really good monkey fist, but I'm not even done with the first tightening session, and I usually like to do two to three real good tightening sessions. As a beginner, you're probably gonna have to do more. I know when I first started, I did about six different tightening sessions, sometimes five, and then it got down to four. 
but let's keep going. So we're gonna grab this first layer and understand again that layer number one is gonna pull layer number one. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm grabbing that first layer, I'm pulling it in, and I'm making sure I understand it is only hand tight. I'm not trying to tighten these things too tight. I promise you guys, if you make that mistake, you're gonna have to start all the way over. So I just did one and one, now I'm at two. So we count one, and then we count two. And we're going away from top to bottom, right there, boom. I'm gonna grab that second layer, let's pull that out. It's gonna make the first layer move as it has been this whole time. Then, I'm gonna push that down, hold that in place, count one and two. Grab that second layer, grab and pull, and make sure, hand tight. I can't say that enough, you guys. When I first learned this, I was grabbing my scissors and my fit and I was pulling on that paracord, really trying to make it so tight that I didn't have to do too many revolutions to do tightening sessions. But over the years, I've learned that taking your time and being patient on the first and second tightening sessions is the most important thing that you can possibly do for the quality and perfection of this art form. So I'm just gonna finish tightening this and I'll see you guys at the last one. You pull that last one through and voila, you guys, you have yourself a monkey fist. Now, duly noted, we are not done. However, look at that. We have ourselves a monkey fist. Congratulations, you've officially made your first monkey fist. Now, if we stopped at this point, could we keep it? Yeah, sure, absolutely. But eventually the paracord is gonna start to move and it's gonna shift and that bearing could have the possibility of coming out. The whole point is not to have that bearing come out. It should never come out. It should be literally impossible to take that bearing out without cutting the paracord first. So. You guys, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through from the very, very beginning. If you guys remember that very first technique that we did where we tighten the first layer I'm gonna grab that first one and I'm gonna start tightening I'm gonna grab one and then I'm gonna grab one and I'm gonna pull that and it's gonna tighten its session all the way down okay so that one right there I just grab it with my scissors of course you do not have to use scissors you can use a fid and we're gonna keep tightening I for some reason have just learned to use the scissors it helps me be a little bit more precise when I'm grabbing so I don't have to kind of push things to the side. But as you're doing this, like I said, hand tighten. I am not trying to over tighten any of this. I am only trying to just create the shape and solidify this in there. And once you get to that last one, you're gonna pull that tight. That is step number one of tightening. And I just did this bottom cord right here. Now moving on to number two. I follow that out and I'm going backwards now. So I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna grab, let's see, here's the bottom, I'm gonna tighten the center one. I have to understand again that this center one starts at the bottom. So I have to see where this one's at, follow it through again, and there's my one. So I'm gonna grab one, and I'm gonna layer from there, and I'm gonna move upwards. So let's get going, guys. And a note while you guys are working right now, please make sure that you stay counting because there's been times where I'm doing this and I'm like, cool, I'm at the right spot. And then I keep pulling and I'm like, wait, I feel like I'm going backwards. And I really was, I was undoing what I was tightening because I didn't understand where my orientation was and I was getting kind of um, disorientated with the direction of my monkey fist not knowing which was the bottom, which was the top, which was the left, the right, the the one that layers from front to back, the one that layers from the sides. Like I just didn't know where I was. And it was really easy to mess this up. So take your time, be patient, have fun, but most of all, keep counting. See, right there, I'm still counting. One, two, three, 
I make sure I don't grab the wrong one because once you start pulling things and you start loosening in random spots, you get, you know, inaccurate um, shapes and you get inaccurate tightening sessions and it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look symmetrical when you're completely done. Now, again, all I did was just grab this last one when I'm at the end and I follow it through. So this paracord string right here, that is the third wrap, that's the third sesh. So we're gonna grab that one and we're gonna be finishing right here. As always, we grab number one, the transitions. Gonna carefully pull this one and still only hand tightening. Now by the time you get to that third layer, it is gonna already start to get pretty tight, but even then, do not over tighten, hand tighten. After the second session that you've done tightening on, then I would say you can go ahead and just grab whatever paracord you can and just yank on it, because at that point, it is not gonna move. So we grab that first one, we move over to the one on the other side to tighten this one, and we're gonna move ourselves down so that we finish out with that paracord. So here we go, you guys. Now we're at this last one. Just grab that last string and pull it tight, man. Just pull it tight. So, now that we're done, basically, doing our first full tightening session, we are going to now kind of inspect it. We're gonna kind of push these layers to the side and man, look at that. That is looking really, really good. So you guys, go ahead, give it another couple tightening sessions until you're satisfied with everything not moving. And we are on to the next phase. So if you guys stuck around this long, I am so thankful for you guys. So we need to get our second layer. We're gonna take that first end, we're gonna put it right next to the bearing, and I'm gonna measure all the way using what I already have. Now I have two different lengths here with my red. I have a super long one and a super short one. I'm gonna go off of the shorter one because I don't need to really use that longer one. I'm just gonna fold this paracord in half like this, and then I'm just gonna kinda pull all that black together until I get an even layer of both. Then grab your scissors, cut that part in half, your lighter, and torch those ends because you don't want to have those come in frayed. And this next knot is called a diamond knot. There's a bunch of different methods that you can learn how to tie this knot. Uh, this is just kind of how I've learned to do it. It is a two strand diamond knot but I use this to hold my second layer in. So after you wrap it around your thumb like this, you're gonna make sure that they're crisscrossed. I like to pinch that crisscross section and then flip it over one more time. And then I hold that loop right there with my thumb. Notice that I have the other paracord string kind of set in between my circle. I'm gonna take that one that is in between my circle, I'm gonna pull it underneath that paracord string that I just used. I'm gonna fold that, loop it, and then you're gonna go over, under, over, okay? So, right now we've already kind of gone under. We're gonna go over one more time. It's a little bit hard to hold onto this, so. You're gonna go over this top layer here. You're gonna go under that string, and then back over that loop. So over the loop, under that string, and back over the loop. Then, you're just gonna take that, and you're gonna pull it all the way through. Now this is the cool part. Once you pull it all the way through, you're gonna have this really cool uh, like Celtic looking shape, right? Now, you have your left string and your right string. You're gonna take first this right side. This is where it gets confusing on this knot. You're gonna take that end and then it has to go all the way around the string that's coming out of the bearing. See this one right here? I have to be on the bottom side of it and then it's gonna come through the center. So, I'm gonna take this from the side angle. I'm gonna make sure that I am underneath that paracord coming out of the bearing, right there. I'm gonna go th straight through the center and then pull all the way, not tight. Make sure everything is not twisted. And I'm just gonna pull right there. That's as far as I'm gonna go, okay? 
Then I'm just gonna throw that one off to the side so it's out of my way. Do the same thing with the other side. I'm gonna grab it and on the right hand side, you guys, you're gonna take this one and you're gonna go on top of the paracord that's coming out of the bearing. And you're gonna go same thing, underneath and through that center. Now, this is where you do not wanna fully tighten this, but go ahead and grab both strings, lightly, lightly start to kinda of tug on it just to kinda of set it in place. As you do this, you're gonna notice it's gonna start creating a knot. And this is kinda of cool. Man, it already looks dope. But from this position, don't fully tighten. Leave some space. You want like enough to be able to fit your index finger in there, and that's how you know that you have the correct thing. Now, from this position, you're gonna take that black paracord that we already cut, right? So, let's go ahead and find that, or whatever color that you were using. You're gonna get that center part, and you're gonna stick that straight through. Just feed that through, and go ahead and just hold it right at the bearing, just like that. Grab that red, start tightening, and it's gonna cinch that black to that knot. It's gonna look real dope, okay? Just like this. Now, we gotta create this a little bit shorter, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out the same thing we tightened with the bearing. I need to figure out what is coming out of that bottom where that longer section is. I find what's gonna pull that, and I pull on it all the way until that knot makes it all the way down to the bearing. Once it's made it down to the bearing kind of where I want it, I kind of pull on it a little bit and I just kind of eyeball it. I want to see right where the center is. That seems about right. And so then I just kind of hold that knot in place. I see where that paracord is flowing and I just grab the next corresponding side. And there you guys, you just keep following suit. You grab that edge, you see where it's going, you grab the next little section, you pull it tight. You see where it's going, you grab that little section, you pull it tight. Now, just like the bearing, you do not wanna tighten these as hard as you can, you wanna hand tighten. Now, when you get to this part, it's hard to know which one's which. So, make sure that you kinda tug on both. See how I tug on this one? It's not moving with a little bit of tug. But if I grab this one, it's gonna move, even with a little bit of a pull. And that's how you know which one's which, so you don't over tighten. Then, you go back to the other side that's still really long, and you're going to do the same exact thing. You're gonna figure out, okay, where is this paracord coming out of? So, I have to pay attention to the way that it's wrapped. I see where it's coming from, I already kinda just know. So, you just grab that, you pull it down, and you try to tighten that one where they're both even, and the knot is directly centered in the middle of that bearing. And I'll show you guys where we tighten this later. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna grab those edges and follow them through, repeat the same process. I'll see you guys in a sec. All right, you guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this black. I'm gonna put my finger in between this so that way I don't accidentally pull this out because once you've done this, I've done this before, if you pull that string out, there's no way for you to get that in there without completely undoing that knot. Now, grab a hold of the black, make sure it does not move, grab that red, and you're gonna yank on it, man. You're gonna pull that as tight as you can, you're gonna snap it a couple of times like this. Snap, snap, snap. And now we have an extremely tight knot, a diamond knot with that black stuck in between it. Don't worry about that excess, we'll get there later. Now, from this point, you guys, you have four strands. You can do any freaking braid you want. I am doing a four strand braid. I'm not gonna coach you guys through that. This is just the monkey fist lanyard portion. But right here, I'm just doing a four strand braid. There's plenty of YouTube videos that you can watch for a four strand braid. You can do a snake knot. You can do all kinds of cool, crazy stuff. You can do a scorpion. I don't even care what you guys do. They're all gonna look dope with a monkey fist. So you guys, at the end, this is something I just kind of prefer to do myself, if you notice. I'm doing that diamond knot all over again, but this time I'm doing it with all four strings, and I'm doing the red layer together and the black layer together, because then this creates another little handle that I have just made iterations of over the years, 
so that I have a handle when I'm using this for self-defense. Like I said, you guys, I'm a martial artist by trade. So when I designed my own monkey fist lanyard, I designed it to be very ergonomic, where it feels good in your hands. It feels good when you're using it for self-defense. It doesn't feel like it's gonna slip or slide. And you know, maybe you have too many keys. So I've simplified my keys so that they're not so bulky. You guys, then once I'm done with that, I go ahead and pick which one I want. I don't know if I want the red or if I want the black. I think I'm gonna go with the red, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the black off. Once I do that, you always make sure that you heat and you press down the excess. You should not feel any sharp edges. If you do, keep heating, keep pressing, just be very careful you don't melt the paracord around it. Little at a time. Then I'm gonna do one more diamond knot with the excess red. I'm gonna create that little knot there. I'm gonna push it all the way down, follow the same process that we did for that first one, and then I'm gonna cinch that one tight. Now I got two little knots right there. I got a bigger one with all four, and then a smaller one, and that looks pretty cool. Same thing, cut that off, torch those edges, make sure there's nothing sharp, and there we go. Now, remember that little part here on the end? We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut that off, we're gonna burn it, we're gonna press it down. Now this one, you gotta be very, very careful. It's kinda hard to get inside of that, but uh, you guys, that's it, man. I appreciate you if you stuck around this whole video. It's about a 37 minute video and you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I hope you gained value out of this. And please leave a comment below if there's a way that I can help out better in the future. If this video was awesome and you enjoyed it. And you guys, I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you did enjoy this video and you learned something. And I will see you guys next week. Ladies, my ninjas. Ninja Vlog out.